Hi, my name is Rachel and welcome back to Oxart Gardening. Today I really wanted to talk to you guys about pH and I have here a bunch of information about how pH affects your plants, what nutrients it affects, and also how to fix your pH if you find that it is not ideal. I'm also going to show you how I test the pH of my soil in a really uh, cheap way that is uh, just as effective as the little soil pH tests that you can get on Amazon or wherever. Um, they, this is not going to test for actual nutrients in the soil, but it is going to test for pH, which can kind of help you figure out which nutrients are available to your plants. So most plants grow best in a soil pH that is neutral around 7 or ever so slightly acidic at about 6.5 pH. And this is because this is the, the sweet spot where most of the essential nutrients for plants are available in the soil. There's this really great chart that shows the tapering of different nutrients as the soil gets either more acidic or more basic or alkaline. And so being in that sweet spot for most plants is what you want to do. Of course, there are some plants that have a need for higher levels of certain nutrients. Um, a famous one is blueberries that need acidic soil and they need a higher bioavailability of those nutrients that are available when the soil gets more acidic. Things like iron and manganese and so on and so forth. But for most plants, as the soil becomes more acidic, they start to suffer from nutrient deficiencies even if those nutrients are present in the soil because these things cannot be accessed by the roots. And so these nutrients that might become less available in a more acidic soil are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium, and magnesium. On the other hand, as the soil becomes more basic, metals are harder to get out of the soil into your plants. Like I said, the iron, manganese, boron, copper, and zinc are all things that are harder to get out of the soil by your plants when the soil is alkaline. You guys also know from listening to me talk that having a live active microbiome in your soil is really important and the soil pH can definitely affect the microbiome um, and there's still so much more to learn on that topic but we know that it is affected. The baseline soil pH that you might be starting out with can differ from region to region. In the United States, the southeast tends to have a more baseline acidic soil because it was formed during times of high rainfall, which can cause acidification of the soil. Whereas more arid places like the Midwest and farther west tend to have more alkaline soils as like a baseline starting soil. There are a lot of things that can cause minor acidification of the soil. Like I said, rainfall can contribute because rainfall is water that mixes with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, creating a carbonic acid which then gets into the soil and splits into that hydrogen ion, which is what causes acidification of anything, is those hydrogen ions. And so as an example of how this could cause a nutrient deficiency in the soil, those hydrogen ion ions splitting off create a bar bicarbonate, which can then bind to calcium in the soil, creating calcium bicarbonate, which is soluble, meaning it dissolves in water. And then once it dissolves in water, that water washes it and leaches it out of the soil and out of the reach of your plants. Another thing that can cause soil acidification over time is a nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, so those of you who live in the Midwest, even though your soil might have been more alkaline when it formed, if you are gardening somewhere where there's been a lot of farming going on, you might find that that soil is actually a little more acidic because of years and years of nitrogen heavy fertilizers being used on the soil. Additionally, legume crops, those nitrogen fixing crops, can cause a minor soil acidification. Um, and this is because as they are uh, forming their roots, they take up more cations from the soil and then release hydrogen atoms, those acidification atoms, into the soil causing a net acidification. If you do have an overly acidic soil, then lime would be the way that you correct that. And there's this really great website I can link you to with a lot of cool data on how to use lime to correct acidification in your soil. So that link will be below. All right, so if we talk more about alkaline soils, these soils tend to be alkaline because they have higher levels of 
carbonate in the soil. And even if you live in the south where our baseline might have been a little more acidic to start with, if you've been irrigating with well water, that might actually be alkalizing your soil over time. At the same time though, if you live somewhere like I do where there's a clay soil underneath, then you might be less susceptible to pH change overall because clay actually is a good buffer. And if you remember your chemistry, a buffer is something that kind of helps keep the pH from changing really fast. And this is because clay can actually bind and unbind those hydrogen ions uh, into the soil as the pH changes. So it, it, it takes a lot of something in either direction to really affect the pH in a clay soil. If you do find that you have a highly alkaline soil, then elemental sulfur is the way to go to correct that. And again, the same link will tell you all about how to do that. So my blueberries are not doing so great and I am assuming that it might be a pH problem. So I'm going to show you guys how I am testing the soil pH around my blueberries uh, in this really easy, cheap way. Okay, so I'm gonna take two different samples I'm going to dig down under my mulch and take a good scoop of this compost that I put down to help grow my blueberries in, just like that, and into one of my little cups. Okay, in the second sample, I've dug a much deeper hole. I'm trying to get all the way down to my clay, and so I'm going to try and get as good of a clay sample as possible with all this dirt falling in on me. All right, so here is my clay, and that is gonna go into my other cup. All right, so I have brought my soil samples inside, and we are going to do our little pH test. So the first thing you're gonna do is put each of your samples in a bowl and add a little bit of water until it gets to be sort of a slurry and I'm using filtered water here, filtered tap water, but like I said before, if you are on well water, that could cause slightly alkaline uh, results. So if you are on well water, I recommend using a filtered bottled water. Before we measure the pH, we're just gonna let these sit for about an hour. All right, so now that we have let the dirt sit for an hour, we are going to test the pH. I got these strips on Amazon. I can link you to where I got them below, but they're about six bucks when I got them for a hundred strips, whereas a soil specific testing kit for pH can run you at least twice as much. Um, and they probably won't even give you a hundred tests in there. Um, but you can also, if you want to go even cheaper than this, there is a like paper strip option. These are plastic. Um, but you can also get paper strips for even cheaper, I think like four or five dollars, um, and I can link those below. But I think that these go way farther, and I also like to buy these because I think they do a double duty for me as a gardener. I'm always wanting to test the pH of stuff before I water bath can it. Um, so I think that they're really useful in that way. And all you're going to have to do is dip your pH strip in your soil slush, and then wait for it to change color, and check with the guide on the box that you got to see what your pH is. So this is my first sample and this is my second sample. And the first thing I notice about these is that this one is looking just slightly darker than this one, especially here in the top, but they are very, very similar. So I'm going to compare them to my little gauge and I think they're somewhere between six and seven right there. If you're feeling like you want a more accurate reading than that, you can always use a pH meter. Um, I also got this for canning specifically, but it can work in this situation. The only thing that's annoying about pH meters is you do have to calibrate them regularly. So if you don't feel like putting up with that or keeping up with it, then the pH test strips are the easy peasy way to go. So I can conclude from this that my soil is probably not as acidic as my blueberries would like for it to be. And because of this, they're probably experiencing a few nutrient deficiencies, which is probably why they're not growing as fast as my blackberries and raspberries. And so if I want to fix this, I'm going to need to add some elemental sulfur to my soil. And I got to think really hard about doing this because 
before I understood that there was a pH difference in need between the blueberries and the blackberries, I planted them all in a very similar area. And so I have to think about whether or not I'm willing to slightly acidify the soil nearby to where my other berry bushes are going to have their roots. And that is, <laughs> that is such a beginner gardener mistake. And now I am dealing with the consequences of that. And so we'll just see what I end up doing. Maybe I can acidify on the far end of the blueberries, farther away from the uh, blackberries, or maybe I could leave them and see if they are just slow and end up kind of doing okay anyway. I could try and supplement with the nutrients they might be missing in like a soluble available form instead. So I will let you guys know in the upcoming garden tours kind of what I decide to do about this, but I hope you learned something about pH. I hope you can see how easy it is to test this out for yourself at home. You can test it multiple times, multiple different areas to get a good uh, picture of your garden as a whole. Before I go, I also want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the ones who are really helping me do what I do. And if you would like to join my Patreon, links are always below in the description. You can get cool stickers, join the community, and I would love to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, happy gardening!